What is up guys, that's it here. In this video we'll go over the Impale Demon Hunter, one of your strongest options in Season 10. Able to solo progress, push with a group and speed farm. Let's go. The Shadow Impale playstyle is quite different from other Demon Hunter builds, almost exclusively pursuing elite enemies to take advantage of the massive single target potential and skipping many disadvantageous trash fights. When in need of immediate crowd control or simply to move through the rift at an efficient pace, do not forget to precast Impale. This will make Vault free for 2 seconds with the power of Chain of Shadows. When you come across an elite that you consider killable, focus it down and alternate crowd control plus knockback from Vault Rattling Roll with stationary Impale spam to maximize the endless walk set benefits. Position and manage your resources with the lightning cycle of Convention of Elements and the damage increase of Wolf Companion in mind, as the two buffs active at the same time make up your big burst window. Shadow Power needs to be activated only once per run, but you will have to manually reapply your other two defensive buffs, Vengeance and Fan of Knives, as soon as they are off cooldown. Impale is the primary damage dealer of the build, augmented by the Shadow Set 6 piece bonus to deal 40,000% additional damage on the first target hit, resulting in the signature assassination playstyle. While other rune choices, such as the Cold Over Penetration, are viable, the Lightning Rune Ricochet is generally preferred for its consistency, with bouncing daggers versus narrow line shots, as well as the additional hits proccing the unique property of Carly's Point Dagger, ensuring resource stability. The Swiss Knife Companion skill takes on a role of a damage buff by taking the Wolf Companion rune, providing you with a sizable multiplicative damage increase. While the Wolf Companion buff sports a generous 10 second uptime, this build runs a moderate amount of cooldown reduction on gear, so try to reserve Companion active for key moments, preferably the Lightning Convention of Elements cycle. During solo Great Rift pushes, Vault is not only taken as a movement skill, but also as a source of crowd control with the Rattling Roll. To sweeten the deal, the knockback of the rune will also trigger the worn Strongarm Bracers. Always keep in mind the power of the Chain of Shadows belt, allowing you to negate the discipline cost of Vault for a 2 second window after using Impale, allowing you to cover significant ground for free. In group pushes, you'll drop Chain of Shadows for the pure damage increase of the Witching Hour, so simply alternate the rune for easier discipline management with Tumble. Unsurprisingly, Shadow Power is a major part of a Shadow Set playstyle, as the 4-piece set bonus grants you the effects of all the runes and makes the skill last forever. This makes the rune choice purely cosmetic, since they produce differently colored wings. You should activate Shadow Power immediately upon entering the rift to passively enjoy the damage reduction bonuses, movement speed increase and increased life per hit that notably scales with life per kill on gear. Remember that the benefits of the Nightbane will still only apply for the listed 5 seconds, so you can use Shadow Power as a situational 8 discipline active skill to proc Bane of the Trapped, Cool the Weak and Numbing Traps. The class staple Vengeance reinforces dominance in yet another build, favored by Impale Demon Hunters for the 50% damage reduction on the Dark Heart rune. You can adjust your final active skill slot according to content. In solo Greater Rift pushes, consider taking Fan of Knives for the toughness boost of Bladed Armor. You can make it permanent with a minor cooldown reduction investment and it offers perfect synergy with Numbing Traps and Cool the Weak. In groups where your toughness and crowd control will be taken care of by supports, switch this slot out for the additive damage boost of Marked for Death Valley of Death to better assist your AoE DPS teammate. During normal Rift speed farm, you're free to run a skill of your liking, ranging from a generator like Bola's Thunderball if you're on focus and restraint, to utility skills like Smokescreen Vanishing Powder and Preparation Focused Mind. This concludes the overview of the active skills, now let us look through the passives. Demon Hunters are notoriously frail, and the Shadow Hunter playstyle has odds stacked against it with a daredevil dive-in dive-out gameplay. Unsurprisingly, Awareness comes with the highest recommendation, serving as a cheat death on a standard 60 second cooldown. 
Cold the Week is taken in both solo and group GR progression for the 20% multiplicative damage increase against slowed or chilled enemies. In groups, said crowd control will be applied by supports. When soloing, it needs to be applied passively in point-blank range, from the 15-yard Bane of the Trapped slow, and active use of Fan of Knives and Shadow Power. Once you comfortably outscale the content, you can swap this slot out during normal rifts for a speed farm appropriate passive, like Blood Vengeance, for extra resource stability and synergy with Avery's Band. While you solo push and farm, Ambush will be a great addition against single target, higher health enemies like Champions and Rift Guardians. Its 40% bonus damage against the first 25% of a target's health pool is multiplicative in nature, allowing you to chew through the first quarter of the fight very efficiently. Due to the scaling health numbers in 4-man groups and the stacking mechanic of Bane of the Stricken, however, Ambush greatly diminishes in value for your primary party role, which is, by the way, being the boss killer. Take single out in its place for consistency during the Greater Rift Guardian kill. Your final passive slot will vary according to content. In solo Greater Rift progression, it is recommended you take Numbing Traps for the consistent 25% damage reduction from surrounding enemies. In group play, where survival is not yours to manage, swap into Steady Aim for the extra damage on isolated targets, especially the Rift Guardian. Finally, use this slot for a massive run speed boost from Tactical Advantage while farming low tier content. The build incorporates the complete Shadows Mantle set, taking all 6 available pieces and opening up the jewelry for the Endless Walk set and its balancing act of damage multiplication and damage reduction. Rolls-wise, this Impale-centric playstyle takes good advantage of skill and area damage affixes. You'll be trying to reach at least a 37% CDR breakpoint for permanent uptime of Vengeance, attainable from Paragon Points, a Flawless Royal Diamond in the Helm, a fully stacked Gogok of Swiftness and one other item with a max CDR roll, distributed as you see fit, for example on the shoulders. However, you'll do well to bump up your CDR past the 40% barrier, with one more CDR roll on gear, in order to reach permanent uptime of the 40% armor buff from Fan of Knives. The best in slot roll for the Shadow Gloves includes double crit stats alongside dexterity and attack speed. Full toughness stats are preferred on the Shadow Chest and Shadow Pants. Area damage and CDR rolls are greatly desired on the Shadow Shoulders. Seek out additional Impale percentage bonus on both the Shadow Helm and the Shadow Boots. It is worth noting that to optimize your farming convenience in regular rifts, you can afford to drop one of the Shadow set pieces and cube a Ring of Royal Grandeur to attain a synergistic legendary power for the content. The default recommendation is Gloves of Worship, but there are other decent options like Leoric's Crown and Hexing Pants. Not skipping on any of the pieces required to obtain the 6-piece set bonus of the Shadow's Mantle opens a powerful offensive combo in the jewelry, the Endless Walk set, Compass Rose Ring and Traveler's Pledge Amulet. This 2.4 rework adds a unique mechanic that slowly increases your damage by up to 100% if you remain stationary and drains it away and increases your damage reduction while moving. This dynamic fits the Shadow Demon Hunter playstyle, as you alternate between Vault Bursts of Movement with periods of stationary Impale Spam. Your other ring slot will be taken by Convention of Elements, whose rotation of elemental bonuses you have to keep under close scrutiny. Once the sequence reaches the Lightning element, you enjoy a significant increase to your damage, so try to adopt a strategy of drawing monster attention during the off cycles and major impale spam during the Lightning cycle. An alternative for the slot is the Elusive Ring, a patch 2.4 addition that reduces incoming damage by 60% after casting a mobility skill, a vital bonus you'll easily keep up by vaulting at least once every 8 seconds. When pushing group greater rifts and speed farming, the timing of convention of elements and the defense of elusive ring will both be misplaced, so you can swap to the consistent damage increase from a lightning rolled Stone of Jordan. During torment farm it is also recommended to swap away from the endless walk set, as it promotes a static fighting style unfit for normal rifts. Use the more offensive combo of Avery's Band and Hellfire Amulet. 
Avery's band's pickup radius bonus is an incredible boon during speed farming, as it benefits not only your movement speed through a socketed boon of the Hoarder, but also negates downtime picking up progression orbs and gold. While any well-rolled amulet can fill the slot for torments, a crafted Hellfire amulet with a solid fifth passive, from the recommendations before, or a generic speed passive like Hot Pursuit or Blood Vengeance, is easily your best in slot. You have several legendaries vying for the Bracer slot, adjusted according to content. During solo Greater Rift progression, take Strong Arms for the 30% additive damage increase from the Rattling Roll knockup. In group progression, consider taking Lightning Damage Lacunis for maximum damage output on the Rift Guardian. Finally, during speedruns, Nemesis Bracers will provide you with more champions to fight, playing into the elite hunting flavor of the build. The same principle will apply to the belt slot, where adapting to the content will yield the best results. Helpfully named after the set it fits, the Chain of Shadows belt adds a powerful mobility tool for solo greater rift progression in speed farming, free vaulting for 2 seconds after using Impale. This power single-handedly allows you to cross great distances, ignoring the limitations of your discipline pool. In group GRs, where you'll be limited by the pace of the party, simply switch to the Glass Cannon staple Witching Hour to optimize damage against the boss. Reworked into a definite best in slot for Impale builds in patch 2.5, the Holy Point Shot Quiver is a mandatory piece that practically triples your damage output. An ideal role would include Lightning Elemental Damage and Impale Percentage alongside the usual High Dexterity, Attack Speed and Crit Chance. The best in slot weapon for the build is the Impale specific Carlay's Point Dagger. Where it lacks in flashy damage bonuses, it more than makes up with a hatred refunding effect that cements your resource management, despite the costly and otherwise unsustainable main spender of the build. An ideal role would feature attack speed alongside high damage range, damage percentage and dexterity. For the legendary gems, Bane of the Trapped is a potent source of additional damage, as it is its own multiplier in your total damage calculation. The gem procs itself with its level 25 property when in melee range, where the Shadow Demon Hunter mostly fights. It can otherwise be triggered by an activation of Shadow Power Nightbane in mid-range or through a follower's Thunder Fury proc. Golgok of Swiftness is one of your gemming staples, indirectly providing you with more damage and survivability by increasing cooldown reduction for essential breakpoints, attack speed for faster impale outputs, as well as scaling dodge chance. If you trust your ability to focus down and chain elites in regular rifts, you can safely swap this gem out for Boon of the Hoarder, enabling the Trinity with Gold Wrap and Avarice Band for optimal farming convenience. Bane of the Powerful's duration scales very well with levels, and having a low uptime on a decently leveled gem is a telling sign that the rift is unfavorable for a solo Impale Demon Hunter anyway. The gem's default 20% damage increase has been reworked into multiplicative, and the level 25 bonus now increases and reduces elite damage by 15%, making it a well-rounded choice for the build. For extremely high-end pushing, or group greater rifting in general, swap this gem out for Bane of the Stricken to assist you in taking down the Rift Guardian. In Canice Cube, a Cube Dawn reduces Vengeance's cooldown by the maximum 65%, allowing for permanent uptime with a modest investment into cooldown reduction, an opportunity you cannot pass up lightly with Vengeance's damage, resource and protection bonuses. Only in a highly optimized normal rifting setup, you can consider swapping this slot out for the farming powerhouse Ingion. With resource stability ensured by Carlay's point, it's only logical to minimize the infamous Demon Hunter frailty with a cubed Aquila Caras in solo greater rifts. An alternative for groups is Leoric's Crown to optimize your companion uptime. During regular rift farm, no other convenience item beats out Gold Wrap. As previously mentioned, you can pick between your best rolls of Elusive Ring and Convention of Elements to wear and simply cube the inferior. If you opt to include an additional legendary power in place of one of the shadow set pieces during speed farm, you'll need to cube Ring of Royal Grandeur to maintain the 6 piece bonus. In the Paragon points, max out movement speed to the 25% cap and spend the rest on dexterity in the core section, 
focus on cooldown reduction, then attack speed and crit stats in offense, prioritize all resistance into life percentage and armor in defense, and take area damage and life per hit first in utility. And this is it for the Shadow Impale Demon Hunter in progression and speed farm. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed the guide, subscribe to the channel if you enjoy my content, talk to me on Twitch and the social media link below, and I'll see you guys next time.